As a YouTuber who debunks arguments, I'm forever receiving requests to take on certain subjects, and most of the time they're related to religion. Thank you, by the way. But recently, a great many of you have asked me to take on the Flat Earth Movement, and I can only assume that this is because you couldn't get enough of Cosmic Skeptic's excellent video on the subject. Because before Alex very kindly gave me a shout out, by the way, thank you again Alex, I had never received a single request to take on this subject, but now I'm inundated with them. But then again, perhaps the Flat Earth Movement has just become the hottest topic under the sun, or furthermore. In either case, I've decided to oblige, and so this is the Flat Earth Conspiracy debunked. For those of you unaware, the Flat Earth Conspiracy asserts that the Earth is flat, and that consequently, all of the evidence for a global Earth is either invalid or part of a grand conspiracy. This includes all photos that depict the curvature of the globe, GPS devices, the trajectory of the sun, moon, planets and stars, moon phases, lunar eclipses and time zones. But it doesn't just stop there. By implicit extension, proponents also denounce Einstein's theory of general relativity, most of physics and astrophysics, and on occasion, even evolution by natural selection. It really is the motherload of conspiracies, because it insists that all scientists from all countries and that all governments have, and are, perpetuating this enormous conspiracy in order to either somehow profit financially, or, I kid you not, to make the average citizen reject the Abrahamic God. Now needless to say, there are thousands of proofs offered by Flat Earth proponents, and to address them all would take a significant amount of time and would bore even the most intrigued Flat Earth enthusiast. And so what I've decided to do is to address what I believe is the root of the conspiracy, and at the same time cover a few of the most prominent arguments. This root is, in my opinion, one unfortunate fact and two particular fallacies. The unfortunate fact is that our education system has failed us. Or as Neil deGrasse Tyson puts it, This is a f deep failure of our educational system. <laughs> that there's something deeper going on in our society that somehow enables people to believe they're making cogent arguments yeah. and they're not. <laughs> and they're not! And so, so, you know why I think it is? The way we teach science is you're just some empty vessel and we pour the science into you and then you regurgitate it on an exam. <laughs> right. Whereas science is a way of thinking. It's a way of understanding and probing the operations of nature. And the two particular fallacies are as follows. The first is the common sense fallacy, which occurs when someone appeals to first-hand sensory experience, normally being eyesight, as if it's infallible. And the second is the personal incredulity fallacy, which occurs when someone is either unaware of how something works or finds something difficult to understand, and therefore asserts that it can't be true. For example, the Flat Earth Society states that the evidence for a flat earth is derived from many facets of science and philosophy. The simplest is by relying on one's own senses to discern the true nature of the world around us. The world looks flat. The bottom of clouds are flat. The movement of the sun. These are all examples of your senses telling you that you do not live on a spherical, heliocentric world. Now to be fair, many of these assertions are true. Our senses do in general tell us that the Earth is flat. But here's the thing, they also tell us that this image is moving, but it's not. They tell us that these two red lines are different sizes, but they're not. And they tell us that these lines are bent, but again, they're not. The point being here is that arguments that appeal to our perception and senses such as the assertion that the Earth looks flat, that clouds look flat, and that stars don't move, all commit the common sense fallacy, because they act as if our senses can't be mistaken, when, as we've just proven, they clearly can. Our senses can be fooled, and therefore they are not reliable. This is something that should be very clearly demonstrated in schools. Moving on, and to highlight an example where both the common sense fallacy and the personal incredulity fallacy are particularly potent, 
let's take on perhaps the most common flat earth argument, the assertion that the horizon is flat. Whether we're looking at the horizon from the ground, a high mountain or even a plane, it appears to be completely flat. There is no curvature. Now the problem with this argument is that proponents of the flat earth model, and indeed many proponents of the spherical earth model, seem to think that we should be able to see a horizontal curve, when we really shouldn't. The earth is just too big, we are too small, and our perspective won't allow us to see a horizontal curve unless we are extremely high up. And indeed, if we go to extreme heights, we can clearly see a curved horizon. Countless space enterprises and even unbiased citizens using a camera tied to a balloon have captured breathtaking non-fisheye photos and videos of this curvature. But flat earth proponents simply assert that they're all part of the conspiracy, including inquisitive children. Luckily, however, we don't need these photos and videos to prove that the earth is curved, just as those before the advent of these technologies didn't either. For example, one way in which you can personally see the vertical curvature of the Earth is to view an object that is beyond the horizon, such as this island, from one height and then again from another height. As you can see, the only factor changing here is the height. The equipment and the zoom are exactly the same, meaning that the Earth curves or that the water is also part of the conspiracy. Hence, the argument that the horizon is curved, like most flat earth arguments, commits a common sense fallacy and a personal incredulity fallacy. It commits a common sense fallacy because it asserts that because you can't see a curve in the horizon with your own eyes, it's therefore flat. And it commits a personal incredulity fallacy because proponents are either unaware of how to witness the earth's curvature, or they don't understand how to, and they therefore assert that there isn't one. Another prominent flat earth argument that embodies the common sense and personal incredulity fallacy is the assertion that crepuscular rays, otherwise known as sunbeams, prove that the sun isn't 93 million miles away, but rather it's just above the clouds. The argument is simple. As this photo shows, and as you've likely seen countless times before, sunbeams clearly appear to converge at a point just above the clouds, and therefore the sun is just above the clouds. Now this argument commits a common sense fallacy because it asserts that seeing a convergence point just above the clouds proves, without a doubt, that the sun is indeed just above the clouds. And it commits a personal incredulity fallacy because the proponents are either unaware or don't understand basic atmospheric optics and they therefore denounce them entirely. Which brings us back to the problem with our education system. With these fallacies clearly pointed out, let's explain what's really going on here. In short, and as Alex very clearly explained in his video, it's a matter of perspective. If we look down a straight railway, such as this one, our perspective converges at a single point on the horizon. And if we were to trust our eyes alone, we would conclude that the railway starts at this singularity, just as many conclude that the sun is just above the clouds. However, the reason that we don't conclude that the railway starts at this vanishing point is simply because we've experienced two-dimensional horizontal perspectives our whole life, and we've evolved to unconsciously know that our vision is mistaken. But on the other hand, we've rarely experienced three-dimensional perspectives that don't converge on the horizon, and we haven't evolved to recognise them when we do. And hence, this is why sunbeams can fool us into thinking that the sun is just above the clouds. What's more, and what just has to be said, is that this argument is just intellectually lazy. If the sun was truly just above the clouds, you could simply drive a couple of miles towards the convergence point and be directly beneath the sun, meaning that you could have one flat earth proponent viewing the sunbeams from one point, and another flat earth proponent beneath the first proponent's convergence point, and when the second proponent says that the sun isn't above him, they can both start arguing over which of them is part of the conspiracy. Now we could go on here indefinitely, slowly but surely debunking every flat earth argument. But to reiterate what I stated earlier, this wouldn't defeat the flat earth conspiracy. Because the problem, the crux, isn't these arguments. It's the education system. We need to teach people how to think and why they ought to value science, 
rather than what to think and how to regurgitate science. If we do this, the Flat Earth conspiracy, like many conspiracies, will indeed collapse. But until then, they aren't going anywhere. So, to recap, the vast majority of Flat Earth arguments either commit a common sense fallacy, a personal incredulity fallacy, both, and in some cases, if I'm honest, laziness. If someone is truly serious about this conspiracy, they owe it to themselves to buy a decent pair of binoculars and to go to the seaside and find an object that is beyond the horizon. That is to say, not on or near the horizon, it has to be beyond the horizon. And then view that object by standing on a chair and then immediately afterwards by crouching on the ground. But most proponents won't do this, and that, in my opinion, is very telling. And finally, I want to address a potential elephant in the room. You might be wondering, why on this spherical earth have I taken on this conspiracy? Well, the answer is an exact echo of cosmic skeptic sentiments. Likewise to most conspiracies, absent healthy opposition, flat earth arguments can be quite persuasive. And so credulous people uh, might be prone to the danger of adopting these beliefs because there's no serious opposition to them. And if we just laugh these things off and say, oh, well, it's ridiculous, let's not waste our time on them, then people who are beginning to become seduced um, by flat earth conspiracies, for instance, might just fall all the way down the rabbit hole. Anyhow, as always, thank you kindly for the view. And I'll leave you with this amateur rocket capturing the curvature of the earth at 121,000 feet.